Hey everyone, Trickster Shadow here, and today it is another Teaching Tuesday where I take your gameplay, I watch it over, I try to give some personalized tips to the person's gameplay I'm reviewing, and hopefully all of us can learn something along the way. Now, these gameplays are typically matches where the person is struggling a bit or they're losing the match, and that is because I particularly ask for matches like that because if people send in gameplay to where they just win, like what, what can I really say? Good job. Of course, some people may want to hear that. But uh, these are going to be gameplays to where people are losing the match or making a lot of mistakes. So keep that in mind while we're watching the gameplay. If you'd like to send your own gameplay so that I can have a chance to review it, I actually have a lot of gameplays to go through, uh, but we're still going to only do one every Tuesday. I'm just going to record them and we'll just have content for the foreseeable future. If you'd like to send your own gameplay, uh, you can join my Discord. Link is in the description down below. Once you get into my Discord, you will see this. You'll see an info screen basic stuff you can read through this head over to the rules head over to the rules just agree to them a bunch of rules here just agree to the rules right there and then you can also go to role select and then click on this little role right here and then you'll get access to pretty much all the channels uh and you want to go to the vhs section gameplay review and you can see there's already people that have put in some gameplay reviews in here and we're going to be going over this one right here trickster werewolf gameplay for review so Let's look at that. Uh, this gameplay, one of the things that I will say about it before we go into it, and it's just like a quality thing, is it is a bit blocky. I think the, the bit rate for the video is a little bit bad. It's 1080p, but the bit rate is kind of bad, but that's okay. Uh, we, we can still determine quite a bit off of the uh, the gameplay, and so it is not the end of the world. Let me get my epic pin real quick. Oh, I draw on the, the screen. All right. So uh, let us go into this gameplay. <clears throat> so we can see that we spawn in as werewolf. We're on the second floor by parlor. By, yeah, we're on the second floor by parlor. Um, all right. So you immediately choose to transform here. I probably wouldn't transform. Usually what I try to do as werewolf and wart, I don't do this as dollmaster. Dollmaster, I typically transform immediately. Uh, but usually as where in war, I typically don't transform immediately. So this is the layout of hotel, very badly drawn. Uh, you're somewhat over here. So like you're, you're probably right here. There's an electric station right here. There's a fire station right here. There's a purify station right here. There's a curse station right here. Then in the second floor below, there's a fire station. Uh, then there is a purify station down here. And then we got a curse station, a shock station. So that are in the basement. So what I would do most likely is since you spawned right here, you don't hear anybody over here, of course. Uh, but I would probably go this way and bank a left and try to hear this, this burn station that's right in front of you. And then try to hear the purify station that's over here. And then after you check out these stations, I would probably go over here. Uh, to the library, check out the curse station, see if there's anybody there. If there's not, go down into the library, lower library, and then just make your way through the basement. Uh, I'm going to explain it based off your pathing. Uh, get closer. It may be a little bit confusing. But the reason why I don't, I try not to transform immediately is just because people can hear your attention loop when you're transformed into the monster. And when you're in that 16 seconds where you're as a teen, they just hear you as a normal team. They don't hear attention loop. They don't hear anything. And so you can get that information. You can hear somebody running. You can hear somebody crafting. And so you can try to catch out somebody a little bit easier there. It looks like we got easy target. That's a wart teachable. If three people group up, then you can see their location. Get their aura read for a couple seconds. Luckily for us, it looks like you found somebody pretty immediately. Yep, there they are. That person ran to the fire station immediately. So the uh, instant transformed then it didn't hurt us at all Good to see. Sounds like they jumped down into the courtyard there. After you hit, you could hear them do the, the vault sound. It doesn't look like you're going after them. Maybe you're going after the uh, the enraged play. Oh, it looks like they are just running into you. Interesting. Definitely very interesting. Let me move my big head a little bit. There you go. Um, So... We go from that hit, check out the fire station. And it looks like we're going after pure five. Now, 
if we're going upstairs, and again, this is going to be me really nitpicking. Uh, and the reason why I nitpick so much is so hopefully there's like some something that like you uh, you can garner from me like nitpicking everything. Uh, so if you're wanting to go upstairs uh, and you're right here. Now, since this is the beginning of the game, we don't really have to worry about ambushes for weapons. It's just, this is the first like 20 seconds of the game, realistically. Uh, and so there's really no weapons that have been made. If you want to check out the station and then check out this station right after, a more efficient pathing is not to go to the right. Going to the right, you could hear the shock station that's down below, so it's not completely bad. But if you want to like be the most time efficient and check out both these stations right here, uh, you can go to this station, then go to lower library, go up the stairs, and then you'll be able to hear this station. You'll be able to hear the curse station that's over there as well. And so you may want to just go to library if you're trying to check out all these stations. Uh, but if you're also trying to check out the shock, then that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because from library, you can hear almost three stations. You can hear the purify, you can hear the, the burn, you can hear the, the cursed. We see somebody right there. They're trying to stealth a little bit. Get ahead on them. Nice. Good to see. Good to see. Now we hear that sound. That sound that we just heard sounds like a little bit of a bottle. That is a burn station sound. Let's see if we capitalize on it. All right, we know what the burn station sounds like. We know that somebody's there. Getting another hit. Ooh, rip. That's all right. I think we can hit anyways. Eventually, we'll get there. <laughs> Event. We're, we're almost there. There we go. This happens. W one of the things that I hear a lot of people uh, complain about is that the hits feel very short. And I, I think that's because a lot of people are used to Dead by Daylight, where when you swing in DBD, you go like four feet off of a lunge. In this game, when you lunge, you only go about like a foot and a half, two feet. And so it's very different. And so it's something to get used to. But I think the more you play, the more you get used to it. Going to our hunting. Interesting. I'm guessing we're just trying to go for the enraged play. Which we may or may not get because we only have one person that's healthy. Everybody else will reset our rage when they go down. All right, we hear somebody outside and we hear somebody down below. We howl. They went left. Hmm. I wonder what your headphone situation is like. Because, and this may be just because I'm watching the gameplay, but you can very clearly hear them going left. Let's grab a little bit. You can see them going left for a second as well. So, hmm. Like, I don't know without asking, but let's assume that you did hear. Uh, maybe you were afraid of an ambush in Courtyard, but the thing is, your howl would have taken up probably up until this wall, like just short of the wall, maybe. And so the entirety of Courtyard would have been safe for you. And so you could have pushed. I don't know why you didn't. Maybe you just didn't hear correctly. I don't know. All right, so we have, got, we have a bit of information. We hear somebody on this station right here, which means that somebody's crafting a purify weapon. And then a little bit before here, while we were approaching right here, we could hear somebody crafting on this shock station. Because you can hear the shock station from this staircase. Or no, not it wasn't the shock station. I'm absurd. It was the, because uh, we can hear the goat. Uh, the goat is the cursed station. So somebody's crafting a cursed weapon down there. And we could also hear a little bit of somebody running up the stairs. We got this person right here. So we know... There was somebody running up the stairs from basement. So there's one person. We got one person in the curse station. One person to purify a bar. We got this person with a sword. So we know where everybody is. The person at the curse station is most likely going to finish their weapon soon. So we may want to try to push the, this one. The person with the sword is going to be nearby. We're looking for the person with the purify. The person with the purify is still probably there. Ooh, this is super greedy. Wow, uh, props to you. So this is a really greedy play because by pushing up right here, we have nothing to break weapon damage. And so if she right here would have wheeled back and tried to hit you, uh, you would have just died there. Uh, but I guess you're banking on them not capitalizing on it. Uh, this is the safer play would be... There's another doorway. So there's a doorway. So there's this door right here. And then there is another doorway right here. The safer play would have been go this doorway and then try to use that little bit of cover 
and be able to push up and keep on following. You lose a little bit of distance, but you would have been way more safer. But uh, this ballsy play works out, so I guess I can't really uh, knock it too hard. They swing, you bank to the left. Looks like you keep on wanting to push. Again, very dangerous because if they were to start hitting you from right here, you might have been able to get behind this pillar, but that would have been very close. Been dangerous to push up as far as you did. Ugh, this is again very dangerous. Uh, so this is all just a kill zone to where there's there's no cover. And this is the thing that you need to be thinking about when you're playing monster in VHS is you need to identify kill zones like this to where if I push up here, there's nothing for me to hide behind. And so that is something that we should really be looking out for. Do we get punished for this? No? Yeah, we do. Okay, so how could we have avoided this death? So the path thing that I would have taken here, so I'm, I'm gonna very crudely draw this out. So we're right here. Let's draw out this courtyard. And this is just the courtyard. This entire map is a square though. Uh, so we have an entrance right here. We have an entrance right here. We have an entrance right here. We have two entrances right here into the library and another entrance right here. And then we have the two doorways that used to be windows right here. So these are all the entrances and exits to the courtyard. And then within the courtyard, there's a couple different objects. Uh, so like we're starting off right here, uh, but we have this wall right here and we have an L wall that goes like this, another L wall that goes like this. We have these dividers in the middle. There's also some pots on either side. And then we have the fountain in the middle, which can block a little bit of damage. And then we have some more L walls. We have like an L wall right here. Actually, is there an L wall? Yeah, I believe there's an L wall. Well, we have walls right here that block weapon damage. And I believe there is an L wall right here. And then I think there's another L wall right here. It's something like this. Um, Very crude drawing, I know. But we're mainly focusing on this right side. So what we can do here is if we're pushing out of here, I wouldn't follow this person because this person, the path they take is like this. Now, what could you do instead of taking that path? Instead of taking that path, you could have just went along this pathway, hugging the wall a little bit more. You do got to worry about somebody possibly ambushing you right here because we did hear the purify weapon before. Um, but as long as you quickly dash uh, past this doorway and you don't hear anybody there, you may not have to worry about it. But by taking this pathway, hugging the wall and using, just putting yourself something in between you and that sword user, uh, you're you're staying a lot more safe while your howl no longer on cooldown. Uh, you're, basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get closer so that you can be able to use your howl to be able to get a free hit because they're going to be silenced. And so I think that would have been much better than just following them directly because then we entered this kill zone and there was no cover to hide behind and then we died. And so if we look here, I would have gone to the right right here. So would have gone this way and then we keep on going we push up and since we pushed up so far here this is another chance to where you could have just gone right to the l walls here these are the l walls that i was talking about could have just gone right here and then you would have had the cover of the l walls but instead you push up you get hit honestly you probably at this point you could have just kept on banking left and they probably wouldn't have been able to hit you because this the top of the fountain but instead you're pretty greedy you push up again and you die so that's what we need to be thinking about is whenever we're chasing somebody where can we go to cover where can we stop the weapon damage and that is really crucial so that was just purely pathing that's just a pathing mistake that led to a death which pathing is something that can be pretty easily fixed gotta think in a little bit different of a way now, uh, this respawn, not the best respawn in the world. I'm going to be honest, uh, because let's say hypothetically, I, I don't know if we have any information of somebody being here. We have somebody on the curse station, but of course I misidentified that earlier. So you may be misidentifying it as well. Uh, so this is a little bit dangerous spawning on a station because people will sometimes expect you to spawn on a station. And so the better place to spawn is you don't want to spawn in this doorway because spawning in this doorway has the hallway to your back. And the hallway to your back could have people that 
frequent the hallway because this is the normal spot to, to be. And so you could get ambushed there. Uh, spawning inside of this room directly, which is what we're doing right now, is kind of bad because then, like, imagine, like, imagine if somebody actually is at this table, they finish their weapon, and you spawn right behind them. If they immediately wheel back and start hitting you, you have nothing to use for cover, and you immediately die. Uh, so that's not good. So what I probably would have done here, what I probably would have done, is instead of spawning right here, back a little bit. So if we're wanting to spawn in this shock station, I probably would have gone to this doorway. Oh my god, the bit rate. This doorway right here is a little bit better, uh, just because if somebody is in this room and they're crafting, then you can duck behind the doorway. Of course, you have the risk of somebody being in this uh, generator room uh, and them catching you out. But if you want to play it even safer, you could go a little bit further into this room and hide behind an object. But if you go to this doorway, you're really reducing the chances of somebody is crafting here and they do finish their weapon, or if somebody's protecting them with a the weapon, you reduce the chances of them just being able to kill you. You never want to put yourself in the corner. You never want to put yourself out in the open, and you're kind of doing both right here. So this could have been an easy kill as well for them if they were in the right position. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to just give people easy kills or set yourself up for an easy kill. It's never good. No good or hunting. It's good. I don't know what mutations we have. That is one thing. Can we peek? I'm not, I, I think, yeah, we die anyways in this. Spoiler. I'm curious to see if we can see what mutations we have. You look at your own build. We have Nightmare, Rabid, and we just have regular Hunt. So uh, Nightmare is we have reduced uh, movement speed with our Berserk, but it lasts longer. Uh, the rabid howl, we don't have as much range with our with our howl, but it recovers faster in the normal hunt. We're, if we're just close to the teens when we're using this, we can hear their heartbeat and it beats faster when we're closer. Um, So we can use Nightmare and Hunt together. There's no restrictions to that. There, are, there is a restriction with Grim where you can't use your hunt while you're using Grim. So you could just hunt and then berserk so that you can cover more ground. Uh, so that is something we most definitely could have done there. Oh, but oh, we end up doing it anyways. All right. Guess I, I guess I went too far ahead there. <laughs> you do end up berserking. Ooh, but you get that easy target. So that's the easy target that we were talking about earlier. It's a war teachable to where three people group up. We can see their aura for a couple seconds. So it's very, very useful. It's very useful, especially on Werewolf, because Werewolf has no macro tracking. Uh, because Dollmaster has macro tracking with the dolls. Uh, the Wart has macro tracking with the, the echo location. Wart doesn't have any micro tracking, uh, because, like, we don't know if anybody's nearby, but as Wart, it's not as big of a deal because you have the armor. Uh, but, and of course, you have the Howl as Werewolf. But as Werewolf, you don't know where people are going to be just across the map. You only know if people are nearby you. So having that easy target is a very good perk. So it's a very good choice that you're running it. Uh, but we see people, we see, so what we see, what we can garner from this, is we see one person crafting. So one person doesn't have a weapon, and we see these two people healing. So we can assume that those two people have weapons. They're they're prioritizing the heal over the craft, and so they most likely have weapons. So there's probably two weapons on the We berserk here. Um, not necessarily a bad play. It's just we won't be able to use our berserk. We'll be able to use our berserk to get the hit. Ooh, they don't have a weapon. They're just prioritizing the heal. All right. Let's get a hit. Now we hear the eye. That is very scary. The eye is the single scariest weapon against uh, Werewolf because you cannot howl the eye unless the, the person that's summoning is nearby you. And it's hard to run away from it because it's pretty, pretty fast. And so when you hear the eye... You just need to book it in the opposite direction and hope they lose line of sight of you. That is what you're banking for. Or hope to find the body. Now, uh, so what? Can, how can we figure out where the body is uh, based off of this? So we we know the, the eye was in this room. We howl them. We, we could hear somebody running down the hallway behind us. But instead we go after the Gloria. And so if I had to guess, I wonder if we're going to find out. 
if I had to guess, the eye user is probably in lobby, probably over here. So, and just based off like where it sounded like it was coming from. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they were in lobby. All right. You should get this down unless somebody ambushes. That's huge. Not only did we get rid of a weapon, we got rid of a really strong weapon against Werewolf. The person's at three hits. They're probably another hit or two away from dying. I do imagine they're probably at critical health now. The next time they go down, they're going to die. There's a warrior right here. All right, so this is a bit dangerous. I, I always, I'm going to keep on harping on it. Uh, this, hallways are dangerous. Hallways are just super, super dangerous as monster in this game. The better pathing here would be to go through this room, go through this hallway, go through this room as well. And then parlor is pretty dangerous around this uh, weapon station because it's pretty open. But by going through here, you're able to get down a significant part of the hallway without just going down straight and leaving yourself out in the open. And the especially dangerous spot, because there is a bit of cover down this hallway, but after this luggage right here, there is nothing. There is nothing here to evade weapon damage. You may think, oh, maybe I can get behind that pillar. This pillar won't be enough, and usually people will push on you, and you'll die. Uh, and we also have to worry about there could be somebody behind this doorway. There could be somebody behind these vending machines. And so this is another really bad kill zone. You want to never go down here unless you know for a fact that there is nobody here. And we don't know for a fact that nobody's here. We're pretty much just banking on nobody being here. And we may get the down. And you can make aggressive plays like that, especially because we only have one stigma uh, loss. And so you can go for aggressive plays like that to where like you just don't really care as much uh, if there's an ambush. But when you get into like the, the one or two stigmas left, then that's when you get to start thinking about stuff like that more, uh, more readily. So we've got two people down, two people not making weapons. Really good. Now this is a bit inefficient of pathing. Again, I'm gonna nitpick a lot. I'm sorry. It's just I, I'm I'm hoping that through me over nitpicking, you learn something. So I wouldn't go back this way. This is where we came from, and so we know that nobody's over there. Now they could have stopped crafting while we ran by, most definitely. Uh, but it would be a lot more efficient instead of backtracking and coming back to where we came from. Just go literally anywhere else. Uh, since we downed some deer right there, let's go check on the curse station over here, and the, uh, the curse and burn station over here, and the purify. Let's check on three stations that we haven't checked on in a while over here. There may be somebody crafting over there. Or we can go back to the lobby and check on the Brett, because the Brett is most likely going to be getting picked up soon, because he's probably fully recovered. Uh, but by going this way, we're really just giving them free pickup chance and free crafts. So we really shouldn't be backtracking going back to where we were going before. We really don't gain anything from doing this. Unless we caught out somebody at the shock station because we thought somebody was there. But I don't think we catch out anybody. Yeah, we're really not finding anybody right now. Brett is picked up, though. Got picked up about a few seconds ago. We go back down here. It's a bit dangerous because we know the Brett's nearby. Now, we know the Brett is in there. That's where we downed him. And we just hear or heard a healing sound. That's the reason why the person started looking over here. Now... We can assume, because we haven't seen the Jess and we haven't seen the Brett in a while, we should assume that they have weapons. I'm going to hope that before you go into this room, you berserk and then you howl. Because we heard the healing sound. We know that they're in there. Getting any closer would be kind of dangerous. Behind, I don't know why we're hunting here. We hear the healing sound. You know that they're in there. That's why you're looking over here. So hunting really isn't needed. Uh, and you're going to lose the hunt when you hit anyways, so it's a bit of a wasted power. We really shouldn't be doing that. And so we see the person with the weapon. Okay, so this is the Brett player at the top of the screen. Uh, and actually, there's something that we can garner from this. This is this is a little bit split-second reaction. So we can see the chromatic aberration right here. This is what people drop when they're bleeding. So the other Brett is just behind this doorway. So if you would have just looked by this doorway, you would have been able to hit him, and this person wouldn't have been able to use their weapon because it would have been disrupted. I, um, we see the weapon right here. As soon as we see that weapon, we should immediately be backing up and howl and berserk and then go after them. Or berserk and howl, whatever you want to do. Also, if you're curious, I, I know the, the air rate is a little bit bad in this video. 
The reason why, because there's luggage right here. You can't really see it that well. There's luggage right here, yet we can still see the weapon through the wall. And the reason for that is, again, the bitrate is kind of bad, so we can't really tell. But uh, if the, I, I believe it's the neck bone or the, the collarbone, collarbone, or it, it may be like the neck bone uh, and the, the pelvis, if those, either those two are exposed, then the weapon aura is revealed. And so that prevents people from being able to like hide their weapon, or, like stick out their head, or like hide their weapon, and, like stick out their butt in like the monster doesn't know that they have their weapon. So if you want to like actually hide, you need to hide your entire body. Uh, so that's the reason why we can see the weapon through this, these objects right here. We can see it goes away for like a split second when his entire body is hidden. For a split second. Like right there, his entire body's hidden, so now we don't see the weapon. Well, we end up dying here. Again, we should have used our ability. This would have been a really easy hit. Uh, there's really no reason for us to use our hunt here. It's a misplay. Should we have gotten the hit though? Nah, that's way too far. That's way too far to get it, get a hit right like that. All right, so we die again. The Gloria got picked up. Courtyard. This is a good spawn location. Um. Okay. Okay, this is a good spawn location because we have a doorway to back up behind in both directions if we start taking weapon damage. But I don't know why we're spawning here. We may be thinking that somebody is making a purify weapon, but I don't know what information we're going off of that somebody would be making a purify weapon because I don't think we've seen anybody crafting here. This is a stun weapon as well, so they'd probably not be making it. Um, We should really be trying to spawn by either a fire station or a shock station. Those would be more priority crafts to try to deny. There's somebody step though. Never mind. <laughs> maybe you're just a god. I, I maybe I missed something earlier. I don't. I don't know why he would be up there. Ooh, we heard somebody else running. This is something I sometimes wonder if like. Headphones are just cracked up, but we can hear somebody slightly running in the courtyard. Not really that big of a deal, though. All right, one thing I noticed with your pathing, and again, we're going to be nitpicking a lot. So this is another kill zone. This is another kill zone that we need to be really be watching out for. We can see by your pathing, you kind of follow the carpets, which is very, very nice of you. I'm sure the owner of this hotel, Doll Master, really appreciates you stand on the carpet. Uh, or on the rugs, but you you really shouldn't. Uh, what you should do, the better pathing is to hug this wall and go like this, kind of like snake your way. And the reason is, is because we have this right here to where, first off, if you're hugging the wall, is they have a, like a cross or a ray gun or anything like something that takes a while to get to you, or even, even a sword really, that takes a little bit to get to you. Uh, you can use the, the damage, like receiving damage, you can duck behind this pillar and stop them from being able to kill you. By going just directly down this hallway and sticking along the carpet, we're allowing people to hit us from both these sides, from this doorway and from this corner, and there's not much we can do about it. We just die. And so that's just another pathing thing. Uh, you should just like try to work into your normal gameplay. Just always playing in a little bit more of like a, a defensive manner. Always trying to the path in a way to makes it that makes it to where weapon use is really inefficient. So it's again nitpicky, but this is where I would have pathed a little bit differently in order to prevent myself from dying. Of course, you don't die here because nobody's here. Go out into the courtyard. I wouldn't path like this. It's going to be another... I, <laughs> I feel so bad, but like I, I, I feel like I need to nitpick as much as possible. So, we're going into courtyard. Now, we have to acknowledge that courtyard is a very central location to where a lot of people are going to be. And we did down a Brett recently. The Brett got down, coming down to the courtyard from that window. And so, it's pretty easy to assume that somebody may be here. Uh, and so the way that I would path is I would probably go through here, push up a little bit, because the way that this is set up, this wall is set up to where it kind of curves open like that. And so if you path right here, it's hard for them to hide behind this because of the way that the structure is set up. 
and so you can see that there's nobody in this corner if you path this way now they could be in the other corner so let's push up a little bit more we should really be checking our left we are about dar but uh we have another another little obstruction right here we're gonna push up a little bit would have been able to have a little bit of cover and would have been able to see like behind here and to see if there's uh any weapons here and if somebody starts hitting us from the courtyard and then we have these pillars to stop weapon damage but we just keep on going hopefully we don't die here all right we're using the l to try to block weapon damage we do hear somebody over there they're being a bit cautious that's good <laughs> Big hesitation on that person. So what you can do, it's not necessarily bad. But we know somebody's at this corner. So what you can do here, uh, because we know that somebody is here and we figured that they have a weapon. One of the things we could do, we could take it wide like you're doing, try to get a little bit more information. But if we're trying to be uh, a little bit more aggressive, uh, another good play would be just to hug this wall because if we hug this wall, this person's going to have to take this wider. They're going to have to come out a little bit wider and put themselves out of position to where they were hiding in order to kill you. If they try to hit you from this corner, you just duck behind the corner and then just keep on backing up. And they still have to go wide and now you're out of range. And so this would have put us a little bit closer and would have kept us pretty safe as well. But taking it wide isn't bad either. It's just different things that you can do. We see this person right here. They could have killed you right there, but they just hesitated. Probably the better play here, as soon as you saw them, you probably should have just gone back behind this corner and then howled because if this person would have even started shooting even like half a second earlier, you would have died. But we get the howl off. There goes Brett. That he was at critical see a glory out here as well don't know why we're hunting maybe we're afraid of ambushes or maybe we're just looking for the other person but we don't want to engage why don't we want to engage we jump down to the library Ooh, we can hear somebody breathing right behind us this video is so blocky but it's okay you see the flamethrower right there i think we're just i, I i'm i'm sorry I, I don't know what to say because i don't know what we're really like the thought process is here i'm trying to find like something to critique but i don't know what we're trying to do um Really, you could have just gone after the Gloria that we saw because she didn't have a weapon. Uh, turning on the hunt was a bit of a questionable decision, but I could see making the decision to turn on hunt to prevent any ambushes. Like if you're pushing up on the Gloria, if you start hearing the heartbeat a little bit faster, even though she's further away, you know that there's an ambush nearby. Uh, but just deciding to stay into the courtyard, maybe you're just trying to fight the weapons. Maybe you're wanting to get rid of the weapons, and that's why you didn't go after the Gloria. Um, I'm, I don't know. Let, let's just let this play out a little bit more. I want to see. Again, this goes into pathing. We know that people have weapons. You should go around, along here to prevent weapon use. But, yeah, we're okay. We're trying to defeat the doorways. A little bit of jiggle peeking. Could turn on our hunt again. There we go. Don't hear anybody. We hear somebody to the left. No, it sounded like they were to the left. Going to the window. Ooh, this is a bit scary because they have a weapon. Now, you should really, since you're not running Grim, I would Berserk and then Howl first. Because people are most likely going to run as soon as you start Howling. And so being able to Berserk and keep those couple extra seconds would be a lot more valuable. This person's gonna get their weapon back here pretty soon. You get the hit. Good. 
You guys are kitchen hallway. Oh, going towards bar. Kitchen hallway. Ah! Okay. Okay, so that is very scary. <laughs> I thought that you were gonna die there. So again, this hallways are, are massive kill zones. Um really you should have pushed through kitchen and tried to find them that way. By pushing through the hallway, we're just setting ourselves up for an ambush and we're just Honestly, we're just lucky that you have good reaction time and they don't, and you don't die here. Is there a curse? That's good. Little bit of a faraway howl. I don't think we're going to catch that. Oh, we could have. We actually could have because they stopped there. We heard them stop running. That's something that if you hear somebody stop running, then they're most likely just still in the like the same place that you last saw them. You're hunting. Looks like they're maybe in bar. And we should probably berserk before we howl. We're losing a lot of distance by howling and then berserking. We heard somebody crafting a shot. Ooh. I don't know if you, I don't think you did catch that. So I, it's something that you really gonna have to turn up your headphones for. Barely hear a shockster getting charged. Now I can tell you exactly where that shockster is being charged. There is somebody, and this is just map knowledge, really. There is somebody, there's a charging station right back here. There is somebody charging a shockster right here. I guarantee you. That's what it, that's what it sounds like, at least. But you don't catch it. It's too big of a deal. About 20 other charges on that flamethrower have been expended. And that go alone. Imagine they don't have a lot of juice in that flamethrower left. It's still probably enough to kill. Hear them running through the parlor. Ooh. Well, maybe they weren't. Maybe they were upstairs. Here's the book of the dead. How this? Nice. They're in that room. We hit them step. Oh, and we saw the shock sphere there. Oh no, I can already see what's happening. We see that shock sphere for like a split second. The shock sphere is. Ooh. Okay. Damn. So we have we have the shock sphere behind this pillar, and then we have somebody in this room, most likely the flamethrower. Ooh, we see the flamethrower. Oh, no. Okay, we see the flamethrower right there. Our berserks on cooldown. Our howls on cooldown. In order to stop the shockster from killing us, we would have to get a hit on this flamethrower. Shockster is very close, so it's either we push up, die to this, or the shockster is going to kill us. This is a time where you're just... You didn't capitalize off the, the howl. You didn't manage to get anybody, so because... Like you made that mistake, you just gotta cut your losses and then kind of recoup your cooldowns and then come back. Uh, cause it's only 16 seconds, so you can just run away a little bit and then come back later. But and again, we activate our hunt. I kind, I really do wonder why we're activating our hunt even when we know where somebody is, cause it doesn't do anything for us besides just lock us into a position. Cause your 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 hunt, all your hunt does is it your you can hear the heartbeats of the teens and their their hearts beat faster when you're closer to them. You're more scared. Uh, and so there's really no reason to be using our hunt here. We got a shock. Plus side, the flamethrower is probably dead. <laughs> That's a plus. Uh, ooh. Okay, moving positioning. By the doorway. A little bit better. Yeah, I went one ourselves. They're, honestly, they're probably still in that room because we heard the Book of the Dead there. Did they already unlock it? They're running to the window. They stopped. They may already have the Book of the Dead. They might have already unlocked it. So we heard them opening the chest. They're running a lot in courtyard. They're probably going, going to go for the revive. They are going for the revive. 
We just stop it. We need a howl. There we go. We cancel it. We get the hit on the shock sphere. Nice, nice, nice. The revive person is probably nearby. Honestly, we should go back to the body. We should go back to the body and see if anybody's by it. We need to stop the revive at any cost. That revive is something they're really going to prioritize. And so because they're prioritizing it, we can punish them for it. Or we're not punishing them for it. They're... Actually, I don't know where they are. Oh, they're right there. They get the revive off. That kind of sucks. We knew that they were going to try to revive, so we probably should have stayed there. Damn. We should honestly just wait a little bit longer. If you just wait a little bit longer, you'd be able to hit here. Any difference? I don't know why we're going up here. We know that nobody's over here. I, that's what I've noticed is in a lot of your gameplay, you double back on locations that you've already been. Maybe it's out of like a sense of security. Uh, Cause like, you know, that area is safe. And so like, maybe you're just trying to get cooldowns in the places that you know are already safe. You should probably just try to patrol somewhere where you haven't been. Even when your cooldowns are cooling down. Like, we're hunting over here, but we were just over here. We know nobody's over here. So we're really wasting a lot of time by doing this. But I guess there's somebody at the burn station. Hands out. Okay. All right, so the zombie is at critical now. Next time they go down, they're going to die. Very close. Ooh, this is greedy. I like it though. Not hitting the shocks for it, instead hitting the person with the flamethrower. That's very greedy. They picked up the, the zombie. So they're at the burn station right now. We should honestly go back to the burn station. They're crafting no weapons right now. Most likely gonna finish their kill weapons. Ooh, did we get the flamethrower out? Very good. That's one kill weapon now. We still have a stun weapon. That being the shocks for your shocks are still very, very powerful. Honestly, a ballsy play. We know that this person and this person are most likely at the burn station. It's upstairs. It's this burn station right here. So what we could have done there is we could have, when this person starts chasing us with the shock sphere, we down the stairs, pick your weapon. Honestly, as soon as they start doing this, what I probably would have done here is just go back to the body. Because if you go back to the body, you're actively putting distance between you and the station up here. So even if they finish their weapon, and even if they're already done, they have to come all the way across the courtyard in order to get to your body. And they're most likely not going to be able to get there in time before you recover from the stun. And so there's, there's two possible outcomes here. They stun you, don't get a kill. Or they don't stun you because they realize that it's not going to do anything, and they just wasted a lot of their weapon charge. And so you could always just position yourself further away from where you think the weapons are going to kill you from. Just eat the stun. It just doesn't do anything. Same thing as you downing a person. You break the weapon. Well, I guess you kill them. But... Alright, we're going upstairs. No. There is no way that they haven't finished. Oh, there's a little omen. There is no way that the weapons upstairs aren't finished. There's probably two weapons up here. We should assume at least one of those weapons is done. Oh, there's not a lot of time in this video left. Oh no. Okay. We should honestly play it safe. We're on our last stigma. We should berserk and then howl here. Now we die. And they they finish the rest of the game as well. All right. Um, damn. 
damn, damn, damn. All right, so the things that we can learn from this video, uh, main things, uh, positioning, your pathing. Uh, you should be pathing in a way that is a little bit more defensive. Even right here, uh, the better way to path would be to go through, go this way through the balcony, uh, a little bit better line of sight, and you can see the end of this hallway right here. Uh, they could ambush you here, but it's a little bit less likely. It's more likely they're going to ambush you on the carpeted hallway, uh, just from the games that I've played. Or if you uh, wanted to go down this carpeted hallway, a uh, better way to path would be hug this wall along the elevator and then go up here. That way, right here, you have line of sight going down this hallway. You can see that they don't ambush you. And of course, uh, we got to be using our abilities a little bit better. Uh, we shouldn't be hunting if we know where somebody is. Uh, if we're going into an area to where we suspect there's going to be a weapon or if we know there's going to be a weapon, we need to berserk and then howl. Uh, just just to be safe, really. Uh, we could obviously go for the aggressive plays, try to push through weapon damage to get a hit, or really just putting ourselves in a bad position for really no reason, because your cooldowns cool down faster when you get a hit anyway, so you're going to be getting your abilities back really fast at any rate. Um, and besides that, uh, we're just constantly going in places to where we've already searched. Uh, if you've already been in an area to where you know that nobody is, obviously somebody could run back to the area or somebody could have been hiding, it'd be better just to clear more of the map just to run to places we haven't been so we can check up on more areas okay we didn't hear anything over here we don't have to come back here for another couple minutes because we figure that nobody's crafting here um and by doubling up on the areas that we've already searched we're allowing a lot of crafting time to happen that really shouldn't be happening uninterrupted and so if we can extra pathing a little bit path a little bit more defensively trying to think throughout the entire time you're playing how can I path in a way to where we don't take weapon damage? Uh, if we can use our abilities a little bit more efficiently, and if we stop going to areas that we've already searched previously very recently, uh, I think that you would actually do really well uh, because you're not a bad monster, most definitely, and not, not by any means. Uh, this is not like bad monster gameplay. It's just, it's just a few things that are keeping you from getting these matches uh, to where you end up killing all the teens. Because if you look at it, we have, we have two hits on player one. We have three hits on player uh, on goth medic. We have six hits on the zombie, and we got four hits on this person. So in all reality, this person dead next hit. This person dead next down. This person dead next down. This person probably not dead next down, but there is a chance. And so really, we probably have three people that are dead on next down. Let's actually see. We can actually see because we have the scoreboard in this. All right, so this person, if you got into a chase with them, it would have put them at critical and they would have died. This person's already at critical. This person's already at critical. And so we have three people essentially at critical next chase. And then this person has an omega health because <laughs> they ate a candy bar as well. You hit them twice. It's only one hit worth of health that's lost, but they ate a candy bar. And so it, it doesn't really matter as much um, it's because they recover a little bit of health. But still, if you would have chased them down, if you would hit them twice, one hit and then down them then you would have uh, been able to get them to critical and so really you're not too far off from winning and even if like if you were to kill both these people you'd be in a two-person game that would be well, very inefficient for them and so you're really not far off 15 hits is really good that's a really good game and so yeah if you uh just try to incorporate the things that i'm talking about uh try to think a little bit more defensively oriented and try to spread out your pressure a little bit more effectively use your powers a little bit more effectively i think that you'll do really well I hope that this helped you guys. Uh, I would love to see your gameplay. Again, we're going to be doing this once a week, every Tuesday, Teaching Tuesdays. And so if this did help you, please say in the comments down below. If this did, I would love to see your gameplay on the Discord, gameplay review channel on my Discord. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good rest of your day, everybody, and enjoy the beyond. Bye-bye. <clears throat>